The sequel to Crazy Rich Asians is coming out. It has just been announced, but we don't think it's going to be as successful as the first one. Let's talk about it. What? You don't think that people are going to want to see me take to someone to meet my uh, ma again? We got to talk about this because, Andrew, HBO is set to develop Crazy Rich Asians into a new show and Broadway musical. Whoa, Does this mean whoa. it's uh, Rain as a box office series is over? Or is this the setup for it to make a comeback after six years? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of pivots they can make, guys. But we do have reasons on why it will not do well, but also maybe why it will. You guys let us know in the comments down below. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. And check out Smile Ass Sauce at SmileAssSauce.com. Mm. What will Crazy Rich Asian sequel be about, Andrew? The next book in the series is China Rich Girlfriend. It sort of is uh, centered around Astrid and Harry Shum's character, which is Gemma Chan and, and them like in Shanghai's like opulence. But here's the thing right now, Andrew. There's no way they're filming something in China with the geopolitical climate like this right now. Right. But here, here's the number one reason, Andrew, why I don't think that this HBO series and Broadway musical is going to be oh, successful. Okay, I do want to be clear, David. We may disagree on some of these points. We're disagreeing over Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, I may disagree with you with some of these points because I have a different perspective. Because I was in the first movie. I was in a few frames of the background of Michelle Yao. I was in there. I got the proof. But anyway, but shout out to biased. John Chu. I'm not biased. I'm just more Point optimistic. number one, man. It's just been too long. Six years is a long time. It reminds me of the lag almost. Not as quite as long as that between the Entourage full live action movie and the end of Entourage. It's just too long. People have lost interest. The actors, actresses, they've moved on to other things. They've had their own arcs in the public eye. It's just too long. Six years uh, has been a long time. Um, but I do think that this series will be different enough where you'll have to like, it'll be reimagined. So I don't think it's going to be like a straight up spin off of the first one. I think it's going to be different. It's going to be written differently. Uh, point number two, there won't be as much support be set because the Asian American entertainment activism era has worn off because people have already like shot all their activism bullets in the entertainment yeah, world. Yeah, what you're saying is that when Crazy Rich Asians, the first one came out, there was like a huge, huge push by people to make it a big hit. It was a big hit, and a lot of non-Asians watched it, by the way, but it was at first sold out by a lot of people buying out theaters, you know, Asian when, yappies with money that yeah, wanted to support. buy the theater for $2,000. It, it kind of a cultural event. Now, there hasn't been quite an Asian cultural event since then that everybody felt like they needed to support because since then, Asians in media have done a lot better. Let's be honest. A, a lot of these people's careers have gone off to do well, and there's been a lot more better Asian representation. So, yes, I agree that the entertainment activism has worn off. Do you think it's also true that so much stuff has happened to Asians, whether it's Ovid or the attacks, that people have been like, yeah, that was cool and that was what was important then, but people getting killed on the street is more important in 2024. Right, well, we'll talk about that in the next point, David. Uh, point number three, people are sort of sick of the theme of really rich Asians because so many TV shows and reality shows and even YouTube videos were basically deciding to play off it, this theme of the global, international, rich, old money, Asian stereotype. Right. And I do think a lot of people saw some images of Crazy Rich spinoffs, Bling Empire, blah, 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 House, House of Ho. Ho uh, whatever I, that new show is in in Korea. I forgot yeah, what yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, Rich in Korea. Really rich in Korea. Super rich in Korea, I think. Um, yeah, I think the spinoff shows didn't do that well. I think that they usually have snobby personalities. And I don't know. Like, I think reality the reality show spinoffs kind of gave it a bad name i do still think that a lot of women and just rom-com fans like to see rich people in rom-coms so i don't think that desire is right, going you're away. saying like princess diaries was about what european monarchies yeah. and things like that yeah i i still i do think since asian hate we have to admit that things are a little bit different that maybe we're like well we don't want everybody to think asians are rich and you know they're gonna rob us or whatever like that i i think that's like a a very very small impact but i do think that the show is going to mostly take place in southeast asia and depict a different type of wealth you know what i mean it's not like rich asian americans it's like rich asians in southeast asia and that's different it looks different right well specifically almost like what rich diasporic chinese yeah. in southeast no. asia which is like I don't, I don't even know their existence i don't want to say it's controversial but it's like it's not not controversial no, to be honest super wealthy rich Chinese in Southeast Asia or Southeast Asians, they live almost more like royalty. 
like a form of royalty. And not only that, Andrew, aren't the real richest people the Asian tech founders like Jensen Huang? But that story's not sexy or cool because this guy actually like built a microchip company and then is like uh, changing the world. Oh, trust it, it's me. It's just too boring. Trust me. When Mr. Jensen Huang wants there to be a dramatized movie about him, kind of like what they did with Facebook, the social network, it's going to be pretty, it's going to be good, oh, even they, though he's a big nerd. They're going to get Jimmy O. Yang to play young Jensen Huang. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, I think that it's going to be, uh, I still think in the rom-com space, people like to see rich Asians. That's what I think. Point number four, can people understand this diasporic overseas Southeast Asian Chinese diaspora that's been around for several hundred years? Like, do people even know, like, that's what they're playing off of, right? And obviously, book number two shifts back to Shanghai because all this, like, old money Chinese people from Singapore, Malaysia are still kind of connected to mainland China. But, like, for there to be more depth to this, do people actually have to understand this world? Because in the first movie, the movie was, what, 100 minutes, maybe an hour and 40? And it was like, you don't really need to get it to enjoy it. But it's like, now it's almost like, if you're going to watch uh, 20 hours on it in a miniseries on HBO, don't they actually have to explain this world? Mm, yeah, I do think that this series will delve deeper into that identity of and more deep cut. Um, Are Chindo's going to be in it? Are Chinese and Indonesians going to be in it? Maybe, yeah. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of rich Asians that you can play off of, and they all come from different backgrounds. So you could incorporate rich Indians. That would be cool. You could incorporate rich Malaysians, rich Vietnamese, rich Filipinos. You could. I mean, you know, you could expand the world. The universe is what I'm saying. If they do that, I'll watch it. Oh, oh, so now you're bullish on it. Okay. Point number five, it's already launched everyone's career, so it's unlikely that everybody's going to come back for the series because they've all moved on to bigger and better things. Like, some of these people are like, like, Aquafina is a gigantic superstar now. She's not going to come back for the, the HBO show. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's going to come down to contracts, negotiations. I highly doubt that the main cast of the first one, namely Constance Wu, Henry Golding, Michelle Yeoh, Queen Michelle Yeoh, right? And Aquafina will show up. Um, even Ronnie Chang, I don't know. Jimmy O. Yang, I don't know if they'll... Maybe they... Some of these people could make uh, cameos. I mean, even Gemma Chan's a bigger star than she was. So obviously, it's going to come down to money, scheduling, and negotiations, which, you know, we can't blame them if they're more successful. But I will say this. I think they should start the HBO series with a new cast because I have a reason why... It could be very good. The new cast could be very good, but I'm going to talk about that after I, we get done I, with your I negative think list. If they don't have some of the old cast in there. It's just not going to. See, okay, with the okay, that's audience. fine. Also, you, to be honest, knowing some of these people personally, they're all kind of like moved on. Like, yeah. I don't think any of them are like, please, let's do number two and three and four. Like, let the studio exercise its contract rights. Sure. Point number six: digital TV shows just aren't as big of a deal as movies, even though they are important. So basically, it's like, it's not going to be as successful because nobody's like, it's a big commitment to watch a series. Like, I watched Shogun because I was really bought into Shogun, but that was like the last time I got excited about any sort of TV show or digital streaming in like 10 years. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I'm yeah. saying that it's like, uh, do people got to really feel something? And point number seven, what helps people feel really feel something is if they can actually learn something from it. If you watch Game of Thrones, Andrew, there's a lot of power dynamics that are talked about. You know, it was really well written. Star Trek. The reason why there's been like 50 spinoffs to Star Trek is there's a lot of good bars. Like the writers of Star Trek actually study a lot of existential philosophy from like really high tier like French philosophers mm. and this and that. And I'm saying they incorporate that all into the scripts. I don't really necessarily see that in Crazy Rich Asians. I don't remember any bars from it that I could take with me for the rest of my life. Okay, that's fine. Um, I think you have legit reasons here. I have a quick list of things and reasons why I think it will actually do well. And this is for the people who are more bullish on it, a little bit more positive, bigger fans of CRA. Here's what I think. You list, you ready? You ready? You ready? Are you ready? Are Go you ready? It. Go for it, bro. Number one, it's based on well-written books already, so that's usually a good sign for content, okay? You have a whole trilogy to work off. You have a whole world of Southeast Asia and China to work off if they can incorporate right, China. Right, they sold well. 
Yeah, dude, listen, the books are well, usually if a series or movie is based off of a good book, it's a good sign. It's not a guarantee that it's going to be successful, but it's a good sign. Well, because the IP is there. Number two, women around the globe will enjoy it. I think it could be a global hit. We're not just talking about America. We're talking about Australia, Britain, okay? I'm talking about Southeast Asia. I'm talking about the Philippines. I'm talking about Indonesia, these big media markets. Korea, maybe, I think it could do well in. Um... If it's filmed in Southeast Asia, maybe the show won't cost that much. I mean, we want to talk about budgets here. You film something in Asia. We all know the shows that are shot and filmed in Korea don't cost as much. Obviously, Koreans make a ton of shows. They involve rich settings, backdrops, city backdrops, poor backdrops, well, whatever. It depends on how many local workers you're using. Sure, of course. Uh, number four. When it comes to the cast, you're definitely going to miss out on these already famous people, but I think there's way more Asian actors and actresses in the game even since then. Like, even in the past six, seven years, since Crazy Rich Asians came out, I know that there's way more Asians trying to act. So I think the talent pool is much larger Do now. Do you think that those people were entering the talent pool because they saw there was a big hit that made them believe? Hey, everybody has an incentive and Eddie, everybody needs some inspiration. Number five, I think rom-coms still do really well. We just have to adjust our expectations. And then number six, David, listen, I get it that Crazy Rich Asians isn't only about Chinese people. It's about Chinese diasporic, Southeast Asians primarily. China Rich Girlfriend would have taken place. How, in how money-centric it is is very Chinese. It's very, it is, but there is no popular hit C-drama in the Western world right now. We only have K-dramas. Now, maybe... I'm not saying it's classified as a C drama, but if it's based mostly based around Chinese diasporic, it could kind of serve as like the one C drama hit that's huge, that's massive. You know what I mean? That's obviously mostly in English, partially in Chinese, Hokkien, you know, Singlish, whatever, you know, all the different dialects out there. But I'm saying it could be a big C drama hit sort of thing is what I'm saying because there's no... Funny right. rom com C drama. I, I do agree that the first C drama is going to be about Chinese diasporic people in Southeast Asia because there's going to be no geopolitical beef. Yeah, no, they, they, no, uh, ain't nothing taking place mainland right yeah. now. It's just so rocky right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I, I feel you that I think a lot of viewers they're like, I don't need to see something that takes place in China. Maybe if it takes place in. Shinjapur. No, that's why I was saying that Malaysia. Uh, China Rich Girlfriend, there's no way that's going to get made. Because the, what are they going to do? They can't even, nobody's filming anything in Shanghai right, right now. Right, well, you're going to film it in Taiwan and play it off as China. I don't know. That's not going to be a good idea. Anyways, David, uh, overall, guys, my feeling is I think it could work because I think the story is there. It's all about execution. I think it's going to work. I partially agree with you just because the high, it was the one that broke open this whole like levy that has been levy dam that's been broken open for the past six years so there's always a chance but uh I, i'm more bearish than bullish all right everybody let us know what you think in the comments down below crazy rich asians obviously a cultural event whatever you thought about the story or rich asians or that imagery whatever it is it was a huge cultural event could this series still do well and stand on its own We'll find out. It's probably going to be a couple years until we see it. So Cheesy as it may have been, a lot of people watched it and it had a big impact on the global marketplace. Optimal angles. Optimal angles. All right, everybody. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.